to pray. Now, there's two ways you can teach that. Take that. Uh, you can take it like teach us how to pray, and I'm sure they meant that. Or you can say teach us to pray. Not just teach us how to pray, but teach us to do it, right? Amen. Teach us to pray. It, it ain't just enough to know how to pray. You got to pray. It ain't just enough to uh, pray. You got to know how to pray. So you need both. When they said teach us to pray, he was saying, Lord, teach us to do it. Not just talk about it, do it. Not just preach about it, do it. Not just, not just uh, uh, brag about it, do it. And then he said, teach us to pray. Uh, these subjects I'm going to talk about tonight. First of all, prayer subjects. What should we pray about? The Bible said in 1 Timothy 2, 1, uh, that we are to pray for all men. First of all, it's prayers supplication be made for all men. There is not anybody in the world that you should not pray for. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your family members. That's the first thing I do every morning. When I get up, I thank God. I, thank, I praise the Lord. I say, God, you've been good to me. Thank you, Lord, for a good day. And I start on my family members. Now I go through my girls, uh, son-in-law, grandkids, my, my sister, who was here this morning, her husband, her, my immediate family, every single one of them, every single morning. But that shouldn't be all that I should pray for. I should pray for our church people. We've got church people here that are struggling. We've got some that's just barely hanging on. And I've been praying for them. And many times I pray for you. I don't guess there's a person in there, I reckon, uh, maybe or two that, I, that I, maybe I don't know that I have not prayed for. And we should pray for all men. Pray for the people at work. Pray for the people, you know, all those people in the news, all them football players, all the basketball players, all the newsmen, all the politicians. Instead of continually criticizing them, let's pray for them. The Bible said we're to pray for those that are in authority. Pray for the senators and the House of Representatives. Pray for the Democrats. Pray for the Republicans. Uh, pray for the those that, uh, that you don't like. Pray for those that don't like you. Uh, if you're having a problem with somebody and you just really don't like a person, you know what's a good thing to do? Pray for them. I mean, I've had my feelings hurt, and I've heard some preachers say some bad things about me. You know what I've done? I'd get down, and I'd say, Lord, bless them. And I didn't even mean it. I said it, but I didn't mean it. I wanted him to kill them. And, and I said, Lord, please bless them. And I, mean, and I just kept praying that till I really did mean it. And if you'll, if you'll keep praying that, first thing you know, you really will want God. It ain't right to have hard feelings against nobody. It's not right to, to hope God's mean to somebody. Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I think it's scriptural to pray that the Lord will stop people from hurting us. Right, sure. there's, there's a couple right now that I pray, Lord, keep them from hurting our church. And they don't go here just once in a while. And, and they, but they hurt us. They hurt us all the time. And they talk against us and say bad. And I say, Lord, hush them up. I don't want to hurt them, but I want him to stop them from doing that. Pray for everybody. Pray for all them people out there listening on, on, online and on the internet and on YouTube. I get, we get letters all the time. I mean, I mean, Nebraska, California, New York, uh, uh, Canada, somewhere, uh, Australia, England, uh, uh, Ireland, uh, Africa, uh, everywhere on the world say, I wish we had a church like that here. I wish we had, a, they say, keep it going, preacher. You're, you're all we've got. Shining light's all we've got. Dear we? I mean, we need to pray for these people stuck out shining in the middle of nowhere and ain't got a good church to go to. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for all men. And then the Bible said, pray for all saints. I pray for the Christian people, especially. Pray for them and their blessings. And then we're to pray for all things. We're to pray for all things. All things. Uh, there's, there's nothing too big. There's nothing too little. It's all right to pray about the weather. There is nothing that you can't pray about. Nothing, absolutely nothing. You can pray about where you lost your car keys. You can pray about a sore throat. You can pray about uh, one of your kids' attitude or a test at school or, or something they have to go through or a, a doctor's visit or uh, maybe a problem you're having with you and your husband or you and your wife or, or maybe just daily grind or an employee that you have or, or something or your boss man. You can pray about there's nothing too little or too big. 
You ever thought this? You thought, I can't pray about that. God's running the whole universe. He don't want to hear about my, my big toe hurting. Yes, he does. He's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. I, my, my big toe ain't hurting, but my, my back is. I about, about jerked it out in here the other day, jerking around on that carpet. Uh, but there's, I prayed about it. I prayed, Lord, touch it. Help me to feel better. Lord, help me to feel better. And I'm telling you, you pray about everything. They said old Charles Spurgeon, you know, he was that famous, one of the greatest preachers in history, I said back in his day. And old Spurgeon, uh, he, he, he was a great Baptist preacher, pastor of the London Tabernacle over there in London, England. And uh, old Spurgeon, he said his mama said, uh, he, she said, Charles, I always prayed that you would grow up and, be, and God would use you and everything, but I'd never prayed that you'd become a Baptist and said, uh, you're a Baptist preacher, and I never thought that you'd be that. And he said, Mom, he said, that's what that scripture means when it said the Lord is able to give you above and beyond what you can ask or think. He said, God not only give you a good preacher son, but he's give you a Baptist preacher son. I believe that. I believe that. I believe. Somebody said, well, you believe Baptists are only one going to heaven? No, I sure don't. But there ain't nothing wrong with going first class. Amen? That's right. And the Baptist church has the closest doctrine to the Bible of any church on earth. And if you disagree with that, come see me and sit down and we'll look at it and see what it says. I'm telling you, I, I'm not saying that because I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist because of what that says. And I ain't got time to get into that tonight either, but we's a fixing to here in a few weeks. And I'm telling you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, old Spurgeon said this. Old Charles Spurgeon had that great church going over there. And they, they said one time, so a bunch of people come in. They said, we want to know what makes this church so powerful and we want to know what makes this church so great and he's showing around all the buildings and he said now this building is this and this is fellowship room and this is this room and that room and he said I'd like to show you our heating apparatus all the heat like heat pumps and stuff and so they went in there and he opened this door and there's 400 people down on their knees praying and for the service that night. And he said, right there is the heating apparatus of the London Tabernacle. And I'm telling you what, brother, he had the right idea. Let me tell you something, people. Uh, revival, you don't just get a good preacher or a, or a good group of singers and have a big revival and everything. I'll tell you what will happen, though. If us men, Friday night and before and after, and ladies in here tonight, will get down on their knees and spend some time Spend some time on our knees saying, Dear God, dear God, I know you're able. Dear Lord, I know that you can do it. God, I know we'll feel a move and power of God in this place like never before. You know why? Because God wants us to pray. The new modern day church has contemplative prayer. You know what that is? That means where you just repeat, repeat, repeat. We'll get into that pretty soon. It's a bunch of junk. Vain repetition, as the heathen do. There's nothing wrong saying the same prayer over if you mean it from the heart. But you don't just say, uh, Lord, help me, 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 Lord, help me. That ain't going to get you nowhere. That's just a bunch of babbling. And that ain't going to get you nothing. They, they walk the, the labyrinth uh, down yonder in the hospital where, uh, I believe it was where, Big T was in the hospital in there where they had that labyrinth out there. It's a Catholic thing uh, from heathen countries across the ocean where you walk and walk and walk and walk and you stop and meditate. And then you walk this little server and stop and meditate. And then you walk and you, it's, it's a maze. You walk around, wind up in the middle and walk back out. You know what that is? An absolute waste of time. There's nowhere in the Bible where you're supposed to walk a little path. I tell you what is in the Bible. Praying from your heart to the Lord on your face, on your knees and I pray. And I, there's nothing in the Bible about walking a certain little path or twiddling beads. That, that's, that's aids to prayer and you, ain't, you don't need no aids to prayer. You can pray in prison without a Bible or a piece of paper. You can pray in the hospital. You can Pray if you will pray. Teach us to pray. Now, secondly, prayer time, place, and condition. You know what I believe? When's the time and the place for prayer? Every time, all the time, any place. Everywhere, everywhere is the place to pray. Always is the time to pray. Always. Men ought always. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. I, men ought always. 
always to pray. Men ought always to pray. That means when you feel like it and when you don't. I know a lot of times we, we, we get all fired up and we say, hey, boys, let's get around and pray. And I love it when it's like that. I mean, like a while ago, I was wanting to pray. I was wanting to get, get a bunch of us up here and let's, let's just call on God. And sometimes it's like that. But I tell you, it said always. That means when you don't feel like it and there's a ball game on you really, really want to watch or there's somewhere else you really, you know when God will bless you? When you give up something that your flesh really likes to do and pray like eating or like sleeping or like some uh, uh, pleasure and you give it up and say I'm just going to spend this time in prayer I'm just going to do it you are the beneficiary I'm telling you it'll get somewhere sometimes um, I, I pray and I, I want, I'm in a hurry and uh, everybody that knows me knows I live in a hurry I try not to be, but I can't help it. I, uh, when I'm, right now, I'm going here and I'm going there. As soon as I get through in here tonight, I got what I'm going to do tonight. I know what I'm going to do tomorrow. And, I, and my mind just runs like that all the time. I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I was like some of y'all. You just, you just see it and whatever happens, happens. I, I, it must be nice to be to live like that. Uh, but you don't ever get nowhere. Uh, but I'm telling you, I, my, my, I'm raising, and, and I'm, like a, I'm like a kid. Has your kid ever wanted to run out the door to school and say, hold on. Now you do that, and they're just a pulling like this. They're just a pulling, and you're holding on to them, trying to tell them something. Sometimes I feel like that when I'm praying. The Lord's saying, Danny, spend time, and I'm saying, Lord, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. He said, If you'll sit down here a minute and be still, I will have. And I'm a pulling. I'm a pulling. And I'm saying, But Lord, please, will you bless me? Lord, please bless me. I'm trying to pray the power of God in and make him in a hurry. And there's one thing I found out about God you can't rush him. You can't rush God. He'll move when he's ready to. And if you try to rush him, you'll never get nowhere. He's never too early. He's never too late. He's always right on time. And you can't rush him. And finally I say, Lord, I got to go. Will you bless me today? <laughs> and I got to go. And he'll say, no. And finally I'll just say, all right. Will you bless me now? And he says, okay, all right, I'm gone. Like, I, that's I, and I have a hard time with that. I confess to you tonight, I wrestle with that every week. I was in here, I was working on these chairs, and I was crawling around under them things, and honest to goodness, I was thinking about y'all. I know, well, I know who sits here, and I know who sits in this section, and I know, and I was trying to pray for every one of them. When, when I went around in here on my... Uh, elbows and knees uh, the other day and I was down here and we was praying for him and everything and I thought, I thought this, I thought, you know what? We might do better if we'd spend that much time praying. If we'd pray for him people, must we spend our knees on these chairs, we might get somewhere. Ain't that right? Uh, every time, all the time, every place is a time to pray. Have you been praying? Have you spent time in prayer? Are you wondering why nothing's going right in your life? Are you wondering why you can't stay right with God? Are you wondering why you get right and backslide, get right and backslide, get right and backslide? Maybe it's because you won't get in far enough and close enough. All right? Number three, conditions of prayer. I read this story the other day. That Today, actually, this scene I read it years ago, but today, Sunday night, April 12th, 1912, there was a woman... Up, I think she's up in New York, could not sleep. Her husband was on the maiden voyage of the Titanic on that ship. She was there. There was nobody worried about that ship going down. They advertised it as unsinkable. They said there's no way this thing could ever sink. So there was no, not even a worry about it. That night, she woke up. And about 11 o'clock at night, something like that, she woke up and she felt real uneasy and shaky. You ever woke up at night and you're just worried and you don't know about something? I had bad dreams. I had bad dreams about two of my girls this week. And the one that ain't here ain't, they ain't her. And, and them two. And uh, uh, bad dream. And I thought, oh, Lord. And I woke up thinking awful, thinking all kinds of crazy things. And, uh, and one son-in-law, and not him, uh, and not the one that ain't here. Uh, uh, 
it was bad. It was bad, I'm telling you. Uh, they're down there jumping at a church somewhere in Winston-Salem for a church group, having a bunch of people get saved tonight and tomorrow too, I hope. Uh, but anyway, uh, I dreamed, and I, and I woke up, and I felt real bad. I said, Lord, what's wrong? Lord, what's wrong? Lord, what's wrong? Well, she woke up, and she said, Lord, what's wrong? Lord, what's wrong? Lord, what's wrong? And she said she couldn't sleep, and she couldn't sleep, and she said she prayed and prayed and prayed. Two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. She said, peace, just come over her. And said, hallelujah, praise God. The Lord said, go to sleep. She lay down and went to sleep. And they didn't know it. Lord, I don't think they knew it in New York till like the next evening or something when, the, when they come in and posted the Titanic sank. And her husband was helping people get on lifeboats at 11 and 12 o'clock. And he had already given up that he could be saved. He said, we might as well. I wish I could tell my wife bye, and I love her, but I can't. And he said, he said, I'm going down. And he helped men and women get on lifeboats, and finally that big old ship sank. And he said when he did, he went down in it, and that water was cold. You know, I forget how cold that water was, but, man, it, it would be freezing about it if it wasn't salty. And he went down in that water, and he said he was swimming instinctively underwater like that, and he swam through that water so cold it could almost give you hypothermia, and he popped up, and there was a lifeboat turned upside down where somebody had, had lost one, and him and several other people grabbed a hold of it and climbed on top of it, and a ship come by and rescued Rescued them at 5 a.m. And he didn't know it, and his wife didn't know it. And when he got home and told her, they both hugged and praised God because at 5 o'clock, the peace of God come over. Now, don't you tell me that prayer don't work. Don't you tell me God can't move on our kids. Don't you tell me God can't touch our boys and our girls and our church. God can touch Shining Light Baptist Church if we'll let him. Don't let people beat you down and beat you down and beat you down and tell you it ain't no hope for you. God ain't going to bless you. He ain't going to help. Listen, the Lord can help us, y'all. The Lord can help us. We over-organize and under-agonize in a lot of churches. Now, there's three types of prayer. First, there's personal prayer. I have a personal prayer life. I go up in the closet I got up and I prayed the power down last night till 12 o'clock, and I heard a voice say, Danny. And I went, I was praying the power down. I didn't even know where I was at. I was so tired. I don't get, listen, this week to me was com comparable to youth rally, except for the mental part, having to preach and stuff. Physically, this is a harder week as I've had in a long time. I mean, you ask them people, I mean, you're here 7.30 in the morning, 10 at night, and everything else in between. And I was tired last night. And I laid down on the floor and started praying. And the next thing I heard was her saying, Danny, going to bed? I said, yes, hallelujah. Don't interrupt me when I'm praying. No, I didn't. Man, I didn't even know what day it was. But you know what I think? I think the Lord looks down when you like that sometimes. He says, you know, I know you must I know you sleep in. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna count that time you was asleep as prayer time. I believe he does. I believe he does. Because in my heart I was begging him. I said, Lord, we're gonna have the prettiest church in town and the sorriest preaching. That's why I told him. I told several people that. I said, We're gonna have a pretty church, but we ain't gonna have much preaching. That's why I was in such a bad mood this morning. Could you tell it? Oh, I thought you wasn't in the spirit. Hallelujah. We don't have to do what you said. And what I said was right. But you know something? God looks at that. And he looks at your heart's intent. And sometimes when you're at work, when you're at work and you're saying, Lord, I sure wish I could get off and go to church tonight. I wish I could be there. He puts it down just like you was there, buddy. And when you're sitting here saying, Oh, I'd hate this. I can't wait till this is over. He puts it down like you ain't here. The Lord looks at your heart. Have you ever wondered why he had Peter, James, John, all them perfect disciples, and John that never made a mistake, and he let Peter preach the sermon on the day of Pentecost that 3,000 people got saved, and he just cussed and said he didn't even know who God was a month and a half earlier? 
You ever wonder that? Because the Lord looks at people's heart. We judge people by little things we see them say and do and say, Sam, the Lord sees your heart. And I'm going to pull over and stop right here tonight. I had some other things I was going to say. But I just want, hope that a burden of prayer will come on our church. And we got it fixed up. It's beautiful. Man, it's clean. Lord, you can eat off this floor. I promise you. Maybe not in a, in a few days, but you can right now. But I want our heart to be as refreshed and clean as our church. I don't see why we couldn't have a good 25 men here Friday night. Do you realize what kind of shape our country's in? Do you realize some of you, ever, there's not a person in here that don't have a, a son or a daughter or a nephew or somebody that's, like, that's headed down the wrong road. And just because your family comes to church don't mean they're right. I'm telling you, it can be in sin sitting right in here. So this, this evening, I want to call us to prayer. Come on, Miss Desi, and play something softly. And I want to call on every man, every man in this church. Let's come out here for a couple of hours Friday night. And let's pray. You say, preacher, it ain't going to do no good. Well, not with that attitude, it ain't. Prayer has stopped wars. Prayer has saved lives. I believe it. I believe it. If we'll call on God, He'll hear us and pray. And I'm going to call on everybody here tonight. Let's just get in this altar. We'll stay there in your seat and pray, all right? Come on. Come on. Let's get in here in the altar and pray for a little while. Pray God will give us a camp meeting like we've never had before. Amen. Pray God will give us a move. Don't you want the Lord to move on your kids? How about your daddy? How about your mama? How about your sister? How about your cousin? How about your aunt and uncle? How about, I mean, really, don't you want the Lord to move on them? I do. I want him to move on my family. Let's ask the Lord. Let's ask the Lord to help us. If you need to come, come on. Father, we thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Father, we come before you this evening confessing all of our sins. Everything we've said or done wrong, God, we pray that you'll forgive us. Lord, I thank you for our church. I thank you, Lord, for what it's meant to thousands and thousands of people, even the people that were here this morning needing help and looking for help. I pray that you bless every single one. Lord, I pray for that person here tonight who's struggling, who's struggling with, with the devil, with sin, and with your will for their life. I pray you'd help them. I pray for every man and woman and husband and wife here tonight. Dear Lord, I pray that you'd touch them. God, and give them that peace they need to serve you. I pray for every teenager here tonight that you'd bless them, help them to make the right choices, God, and to say no to the devil. I pray for all of our little kids here tonight, even these little babies, right on down to these little tiny ones. I pray that your hand would be upon every single one of them. Lord, I pray that you'd bless us as we get ready for our big day here in a couple of weeks. I pray you'd bless us as we get ready for camp meeting. I pray for that Sunday night service. Lord, that the power of the Holy Ghost will come down for that Sunday morning service. Lord, when the tabs are here, I pray you bless them for the Saturday night service. Lord, show us your will for it. Do it, Lord. Saturday morning for the Friday night service, for the Friday morning service, for the Thursday night service, for the Thursday morning service, for the Wednesday night service. Oh, God, meet with us in power. Lord, we know we don't need to see just what men can do. Lord, I pray we'd see what you can do. I pray that your power come. Hallelujah. I pray, God, the Holy Ghost to come, Lord. Bring Holy Ghost conviction. Lord, fill this church full of people and power and praise. Oh, God, I pray, Lord, that you'd fill this place up, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray God, that your will will be done, that you'd meet every need, that you'd stir our hearts, Lord. Let it be the best camp meeting we've ever had, Lord. Not just so we can enjoy it, Lord, but, so, but you could get the glory, Lord, and that people would know that you're real. Lord, help us to live for you and serve you and do the right thing, God. Help us to put you first in our life, Lord, the way we wished we had when we stand before you face to face. Lord, we'll thank you for it. Give our men this week the burden to pray. Bless us as we meet to pray Friday night that your will Lord, we may be in heaven by then. But Lord, help us if we're still here to meet and pray. Call on you. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen.